Just to refresh, it's the 1980s. I was a young, horny comedian who had taken the easy way out of the comedy club circuit. The easy way being working with a party entertainment troupe, joining a company full of glitzy showbiz dancers, where I was one of two straight men had its perks, namely the female dancers. My limited thinking went something like this. They're single, I'm single. They're horny, I'm horny. They're beautiful, talented artists, I'm horny. <laughs> This was obviously not appropriate workplace behavior. Mainly because back then, that concept didn't even exist. Well, maybe it did, but only as a concept. So after my third or fourth dalliance with different dancers, I finally fell for one of them. And fittingly, she turned around and broke my heart. Well, actually, since she was a dancer, she didn't turn around, she pirouetted. <laughs> now this broken heart concept was definitely a reality, even back in the 80s. And so was the concept of don't shit where you eat, or uh, in my case, don't shit where you do the conga. Come on, check your body, baby, do the conga. I can't listen to the shit any longer. So now we're at a sweet 16 party. It's the daughter of a music mogul uh, at his mansion on Long Island. And I'm still torn up about my uh, dancer ex-girlfriend uh, because, you know, she dumped me. Even worse, she moved in with my coke dealer. <laughs> and if that wasn't bad enough, she didn't even do drugs. <laughs> okay. So the two of us are standing with these fabulous guests at a fabulous party tent in the Mughal's fabulous backyard, and we're watching a private performance of Run DMC. Did I mention the guy was a music mogul? Okay. Uh, suddenly there's this 18-year-old boy with a baseball, back, uh, baseball cap on backwards, hitting on my ex. Must be one of the daughter's friends, but certainly not dressed for the party. Baggy jeans and gold chains. Sort of a white, pimply-faced run DMC. So he comes onto my ex with a very original pickup line. You don't know who I am, but I'm going to be famous next week. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right after you kill your principal, yeah. <laughs> okay, he's on crack. I mean, who would say something like that except the teenager whose frozen brain just told him he's God? Thankfully, she gives him the brush off in that exceptionally chilly way that only dancers can do. But ten minutes later, there he is, on stage, in the next act. The unknown, but ready to blow up, Beastie Boys. They do one song, something about fighting your right-wing party. Uh, anyways, uh, then they're stopped by a large security guard who ushers them off stage. Evidently, Mogul Dad deemed their lyrics inappropriate for his 16-year-old daughter's ears. Like a volcano on the butt to a rock! I'm sorry. This, I've just been watching rockers to try to get that part down there. Okay. <laughs> sorry. It, it's kind of fun. But, uh, anyway, I, I digress. Uh, anyways, um, yeah. <clears throat> right. Oh, yeah. Uh, never mind that she had seen them on local cable station. Personally requested them thinking, I'm horny. They're obviously horny. I want them at my party. But there they were, having their plug pulled, and not in a good way. <clears throat> Beastie Boys, the first white rappers, the original cultural expropriators of black music. Well, if you don't count Elvis, or for that matter, Glenn Miller. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, well, thank you. Thank you, people my age. Okay. <laughs> During the commotion, my boss pulled me aside to show me the host's private office. The walls were covered with gold records. I thought, those little sons of beasties really blew their big break. Of course, I, often, I also thought that a, a mentally undeveloped boy man who grabs women's privates could never be elected president. And so, what the fuck do I know? Anyway, so, so then came the grand finale. The daughter was on stage with a magician and a flying saucer. Not a real flying saucer. I mean, the dad was rich, but not Elon Musk, you know, personal space travel rich. A door opened on the saucer when the daughter stepped inside. With a wave of the magician's hand and a blast of foul-smelling stage smoke, the UFO disappeared. The audience gasped. It was the smoke, not the magic. Uh, but then, from the rear of the tent, who should appear but the sweet 16-year-old waving and throwing kisses to everyone? At this time, her birthday cake was rolled out onto the dance floor, gasps from the crowd again. This time, it was gasps of obligatory joy. It was beautiful, three feet high, and, I mean in diameter, seven layers high, covered with butter frost. Now wait, that's not frosting. It's little plastic shingles? 
Oh my god. It's covered in credit cards. Bergdorf's, Saks, every high-end retailer was represented. I don't know if the cards were real because I never got my slice of the pie. Uh, or actually of the cake for that matter. When the party was over and we were rolling our costume cases out of the driveway, the host ran toward us, waving his arms, saying someone had stolen one of his gold albums. He asked if anyone had seen anyone who looked suspicious. As we shook our heads, I thought to myself, why not ask those horny boys your daughter invited? Soon enough, though, those young dogs would have gold albums of their own. Thank you. <laughs>